This tutorial will introduce you to how stresses in the ground change when it is loaded. Knowledge of change in vertical stress induced by surface loading is of particular interest for two main reasons. These are for calculating the settlement of structures and for exploration and design purposes. In preceding videos we will cover the use of charts to actually be able to calculate changes in stress but for now we'll be concerning ourselves with some basic concepts. Okay so let's give ourselves a scenario we can investigate. Here we have some ground which we're going to induce a stress on by loading it with a point load and we can call it Q. Stress distribution profiles within loaded ground show a variable rate of decay as the depth increases. If we draw a graph to illustrate this, it will look something like this. The graph depicts the fact that as you increase with depth, the change in stress decreases. It decreases and becomes almost like an asymptote. It is important to emphasize that we are referring to the change in stress, not change in total stress. On the graph, we can show how the change in stress changes when we move away from the point load Q. This change in stress that is plotted vertically here is dependent upon the value of Z, just as before. Therefore, if we were to look at, say, a point here, the change in stress graph would look slightly different, as so. It is important to know the change in stresses in the ground when it is loaded for calculating the settlement of a structure. If I introduce another load, let's call it W, the change in stresses overlap, as you can see from uh, this illustration here. Therefore, the change in stress induced by both point loads need to be considered if we were looking at the settlement that would be caused by these two loads. If you were to increase the distance between these point loads, however, both loads would not need to be considered at the same time, as the distribution in the change of stress would no longer overlap, as you can see now. Now let's look at how we actually calculate these, or the methods of calculating these changes in stress. There are three methods for calculating stresses which use their own graph. One is the Foster's chart, second the Fadum's chart, and thirdly the Newmark's chart. We will cover Foster's and Fadum's chart in this tutorial. In a, another video we will look at Newmark's chart. Let's take a look at the Foster's chart first. Foster's chart is used for stresses due to circular foundation loads applied at the ground surface. Very important to note this. So, um, you also have the diagram in the top left hand corner and from the diagram we can work out uppercase R, lowercase Q, uppercase Z and lowercase R uppercase R is the radius of the foundation, lowercase q is the stress applied to the foundation, so that would be a value in kPa or kilonewtons per meter squared. Z, capital Z, is the depth of the point of interest below the footing. The point of interest would uh, be given in the question, so um, calculating this won't be a problem. Lowercase r is the distance from the center of the footing to the point of interest. So once we know all these values um, we can then go on to calculate lowercase z over uppercase r and then lowercase r over uppercase r. Um, th calculating these two will then enable us to read off a value for the influence factor. The lines that correspond to Z over uppercase R are the horizontal ones on the graph, as you can see here. 
the curved lines correspond to the value of lowercase r over uppercase r. Where these two lines intersect, you draw a sh line straight up and you can d determine a value for the influence factor. Um, and let's just give a quick example here to say we had um, this value for lower uh, z over uppercase r and just a random value here for lowercase r over uppercase r. Where they intersect, you draw a line straight up and read off the influence factor value. Then, finally, the change in stress at the point of interest is found by simply Q times the influence factor and that gives us our delta sigma z, the change in stress. Let's have a look now at Fadden's chart. This chart is used for stresses due to rectangular foundation loads applied to the ground surface. The point of interest needs to be at a corner of a rectangle when using this chart. I'll clarify this point in a moment. Fadham's chart looks like this. Again, take note of the diagram. The diagram helps you identify what values are. Q is the same as before, the stress applied to the foundation. Z is the depth of the point of interest below the footing. Lowercase n equals the breadth divided by z and m equals the length divided by z. The lines which correspond to m are vertical and the lines which correspond to n are the curved lines on the graph. So let's say m equals 1 and n equals 0.15. You would find where they intersect and see the resulting value for the influence factor is 0.12. Don't be alarmed by the change in symbol used on the graph for the influence factor. They mean the same thing. Then, finally, the change in stress at a given point is found by Q times the influence factor delta uh, equaling delta sigma z, the change in stress. But um, it's not quite as simple as that. The point of interest, as I said, needs to be at a corner of a rectangle when using this chart. If you have a footing that was, say, 4 meters by 2 meters, and the point of interest was 2 meters below the center of the footing, you need to divide the footing into rectangles. This is to make the point of interest at a corner. And hopefully you can see this from the example that I'm doing here. Therefore, in this case, B equals 1 meter and L equals 2 meters because we're now looking at these smaller rectangles. As you have four rectangles to consider, when calculating delta sigma z, you need to multiply it by 4. This is um, so that is Q times the influence factor I times by 4, which equals delta sigma z. You can do that in this case as the rectangles are the same. In later tutorials, we'll look at examples where the rectangles are not the same and the procedure for tackling such a scenario. Okay, so hopefully your knowledge of how stresses in the ground change when it is loaded has improved during the course of this video. We have looked at how stress distribution profiles within loaded ground show a variable rate of decay as the depth increases, and the calculation of change in stress using Foster's and Fadham's charts. In the following tutorials, we'll have a look at how Newmark's chart works and then we'll look at some problem questions using these charts.